The Bender Slaughter Pen from the History of Labette County, Kansas and Representative Citizens, published 1901. If you enjoy similar audio readings, please subscribe. About the last of 1870, a family of Hollanders or Germans consisting of four persons, a man, his wife, son, and daughter, moved on the northeast quarter of Section 13, Township 31, Range 17, Osage Township. The man was known as William Bender, the son and daughter as John and Kate. They erected a small frame house, 16 by 24 feet, which was divided into two parts by studding, on which hung an old wagon sheet for a partition. In the front part, they had a few articles for sale, such as tobacco, crackers, sardines, candies, powder, and shot. Just outside the door was a plain sign, groceries. They also pretended to furnish lunch and entertainment for travelers. In the back room, almost up against the partition studding, a hole just large enough to let a man down, had been cut in the floor, the floor to which raised with a leather strap. Under this excavation had been made in the ground, leaving a hole some six or seven feet in diameter, and about the same in depth. It was supposed that when a victim was killed in the daylight, he was thrown into this hole until night, when he could be taken out and buried. Little was known of the family generally. They repelled rather than invited communication with their neighbors. Kate traveled over the county somewhat, giving spiritualistic lectures and like entertainments, but created very little stir or comment. Two young people occasionally went to church and singing school, and the men frequently attended public meetings in the township. The place was on the road, as then traveled, from Osage Mission to Independence, during 1871 and 1872, several parties had traveled the road, making inquiries for persons who were missing, who had last been heard from at Fort Scott or Independence. About March 10, 1873, a public meeting was held at Harmony Grove Schoolhouse in District No. 30 to discuss the herd law, the matter of so many people missing and the fact that suspicion rested upon the people of Osage Township was spoken of. It was said a vigorous search should be made under the sanction of a search warrant. Both of the benders were present. Father Dick said, commence the search at my house, and Father Deanst responded, yes, and go directly from there to my house. Old man Bender, who sat between them, made no reply. About the 1st of March, 1873, Dr. William York had left his home on Onion Creek in Montgomery County in search of a man and child by the name of Loucher, who had left Independence for Iowa during the previous winter and had never thereafter been heard of by their friends. Dr. York reached Fort Scott and started to return about March 8th, but never reached home. In the fore part of April, Colonel A. M. York, with some 50 citizens from Montgomery County, started from Independence to make a thorough search for his brother. They went as far as Fort Scott, but could get no clue to the missing men. On their return, they visited the Bender Place and tried to induce Kate, who professed to be a clairvoyant, to make an effort to help discover the doctor. But Kate was able to successfully elude their efforts without throwing any suspicion on herself. That night, the Bender family left their place, went to Thayer, where they purchased tickets to Humboldt, and took the northbound train at five o'clock on the following morning. A day or two thereafter, their team was found hitched a short distance from Thayer and apparently nearly starved. It was about the 1st of May that a party passed the Bender place, noticing the stock wandering around as though wanting care. On going to the stable, he found the team gone, and a calf dead in a pen, evidently having starved to death. He then went to the house, but found no one there. He notified the township trustee, who with other parties went to the premises and broke into the house, where they found nearly everything in usual order, little if anything aside from clothing and bed clothing, having been taken. A sickening stench almost drove them from the house. 
The trap door in the back room was raised, and it was discovered that in the hole beneath was clotted blood, which produced the stench. The house was removed from where it stood, but nothing further was found under it. In a garden nearby a depression was noticed, and upon digging down, the body of Dr. York was found buried, head downward and feet being scarcely covered. His skull was smashed in, and his throat cut from ear to ear. On farther search, seven more bodies were found, all whom, except one, were afterwards identified by their friends. For example, Loucher and his little girl, seven or eight years old, buried in one hole. William Boyle, McCrady, Brown, and Mackenzie. The other body was never identified. It is altogether probable that other parties were murdered whose bodies were never found. From the victims of the benders seemed to procured as far as it was afterwards ascertained about the following money and property. From Boyle, $1,900. From McCrady, $2,600. From Brown, $37. A team of horses and a wagon from McKenzie, 40 cents. From Loucher, $38. And a good team and wagon from Dr. York, $10. A pony and saddle. A part of the property which they had disposed of was afterwards recognized and restored to the friends of the murdered men. Those who attempted to follow the benders became satisfied of the following facts. They took the train at Thayer and all went as far as Chanute, where John and Kate got off and took the M, K, and T train south on which they went to Red River in the Indian Territory, which was then the terminus of the road. Here they were subsequently joined by the old folks, who seemed to have gone to St. Louis after John and Kate left them at Chanute. Detectives thought they were able to trace their wanderings through Texas and Mexico. Parties supposed to be the benders were apprehended in many parts of the country, and several were brought back to this county for identification, who proved to have little if any resemblance to this butcher gang. Two women, supposed to be the old woman and Kate, were arrested in Michigan in 1890 and brought to this county on requisition. On habeas corpus proceedings, they were released, the court being satisfied that they were not the benders. Several parties who lived near the benders were supposed to be implicated with them in their crimes, and some of them were arrested, but upon examination they were discharged, there not being sufficient evidence to hold them for trial. One or two of those thus arrested brought suit for false imprisonment and obtained a verdict for a small amount of damages.